Hello, today is Saturday, October 5th, 2024. We'll go over, we'll do our disclaimer, go over our calls, make our predictions. This is my trading plan for Monday, which is October 7th, 2024. Please remember my calls can be wrong. Trade at your own risk. Also, there's a big storm in the Gulf of Mexico. It's supposed to hit Florida tomorrow night and last all next week there's a chance uh, it might affect my ability to get on the internet next week so if I don't post a, a video that would be the reason we look for the pattern with the early high that's this and Monday we should see another pattern with an early high we said that um, we had some targets. One was to see higher prices. Um, we got that. We had some optional targets. One was 5680, 56, which didn't print, and I said both of them probably wouldn't. The other one I made a typo. I said 56, 16, 63. Should have been 57, 16, 63. Thanks for the person who pointed that out to me, but the typo is a mistake, so I have to say that one didn't print either, even though had I not made the mistake, it would have printed. This is a review of what we said. We said if the decline is going to continue unabated, we should gap down under prior lows. I said the fact that we couldn't drop us of concern to bears. And if we rallied on Friday, we could start a substantial leg higher, and so far that's playing out. We also got the commonest thing that the mixed signals rules, which is a gap prompt move outside the day's range. These are the patterns we should see next week. Monday has an early high. It has a late low, but the late low doesn't have to be less than the early high. It's uh, can be a rally day. Of significance is that Friday is Carol Ann's F15. Within three days, it outlines a target area for a possible change in trend. And once again, if there is a change in trend, it tends to be in one of these areas, but the converse isn't true. Just because you have one of these time frames, that doesn't mean there has to be a change in trend. Just remember, if there is a change in trend, that's an if. It could be significant. These were the patterns we had on Friday. The morning found an ultimate buy and an ultimate sell. That's pretty much a guarantee. The morning is going to trade higher, trade lower, and wind up going nowhere. So we traded under these yellow lines, traded over these yellow lines, and later in the afternoon and later in the day, it was still within those yellow lines, so we didn't go anywhere. We did get a buy signal in the afternoon. All these squiggles were called false moves, but eventually the buy signal paid off. Once again, MJT signals gives targets, they don't give entries. Well, this is the weekly chart. We now have nine bars of the DeMarc set up. There doesn't have to be a pause in the action here, but very often when you get nine bars up, you're pretty close to a reversal. It doesn't have to be exact. Here's another nine. You can see you went a bit more and then pull back. So it's an area, once again, where there could be a pause. This is um, the daily chart. We have bar 13 of the TD combo, bar 12 of a TD sequential cell and alignment. Now bar 13 hasn't printed, but it can finish early, and any print over this high is going to be bar 13. So we have those in alignment here. Again, it's an area where a top could appear. Now you can count this as a recycle, which means you have to start over again. And if we keep rallying, 
that's how you have to interpret it. But the recycle is his way of avoiding fighting a trend that just isn't stopping. We've already kind of dilly dallied around here. We don't seem to be going up in a straight line. And even though that could change for right now, subject to change, I'm not counting this as a recycle. Um, when you get these in alignment like this, particularly when I have bar nine on the weekly chart, it's an area where the market typically is overextended. The overextended markets can correct in terms of time by consolidating. They can get more overextended. They could fail. We could keep going higher. But if we start dropping here when these things are lined up, it should be a pretty big drop. And again, if this interpretation of a cup with upsloping handle is right, this high should hold, this line should hold, and we should revisit this line, 54.0696. Of course, my interpretation could be wrong. That's always possible. But if that's your stop, that's your target. And this is one of the areas where if this is going to work, we should be pretty close to the top, even though until we start dropping, I don't think you should bet the, the family heirlooms on it. We're still in a pretty big bull market here. Picking, picking the tops in bull markets can be dangerous to do. But if you're going to pick one, this is the area next week where I would look. We have the DeMarc stuff, and we have the Caroline stuff, and we have sentiment stuff. I mean, it's not a guarantee, but it, it's um, it's a lot of things which would justify a big drop if, underline the word if, if we start dropping. Until we start dropping, I don't really have a signal I'm going to risk money on. Well, Monday's pattern has the early high regardless of where we open. There's a low in the final hour of trading, but don't forget that doesn't have to be less than the early high. Friday's rally nearly always follows through when Monday's open. It's quite negative if we gap down instead. The Mark's topping indicators are in alignment and we're near Caroline date for a possible change in trend. None of this guarantees a top here, but if this is a top, it should be significant. So we're in an overextended area. It's a pattern with the early high. Even though it's an early high, we could trade higher here, but um, this next week is one where I would be alert for a change in trend. It doesn't have to happen, but if it happens, it could be significant. So if you're long here, I would have a stop. Pattern with the early high, and that's today's call.